This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. And today I wanted to talk about my favorite Bitcoin desktop software. This is called Sparrow Wallet and it's available at sparrowwallet.com. Make sure you're using the correct URL for that. Now Sparrow is a versatile software tool that allows you to easily set up both Bitcoin hot wallets where your private keys are held online. These are a little bit more risky and should be used for smaller dollar or Bitcoin amounts. Bitcoin cold wallets as well, where the private keys are held offline on a hardware wallet using either single SIG or multi SIG. And one way of thinking about Sparrow as sort of a bridging software that allows you to connect either your node or someone else's node to this software and then use that to connect to a hardware wallet. And so Sparrow is this very versatile tool. I'm just going to be covering one small usage of it today. Sparrow is currently available for desktop and laptop computers only. There's no mobile version. And in this video, we're going to use Sparrow to create a desktop hot wallet that we can then use to receive and send Bitcoin. As I said, hot wallets should only be used for small amounts of Bitcoin, not life savings. In a later video, I hope to cover how to connect your hardware wallet, like your cold card, Jade, your cold card or your Jade, your Blockstream Jade to Sparrow as well. So the first step using Sparrow Wallet is to go to the download page. Again, you want to make sure you have the correct URL and then you can download it based on your operating system, whether you're using an uh, Apple chip or Intel chip or Windows or Linux or whatever it is. Again, make sure you're using the correct URL when you download it. And then you can also, if you scroll down here, you'll see that there are instructions that teach you how to verify the release for the software. This is important to do, especially if you're going to use this with large amounts of Bitcoin. If you need more handholding than they provide on this website, you can also check out in my paid Bitcoin course. I cover both GPG and software verification in depth for Sparrow and for other software. So you can check that out. But if you don't want to pay for that, you can also just do it here, verifying the release. Also beware of scammers in the Sparrow Telegram chat. If you look that up, they'll try to get you to call them to click on links or to download malware onto your computer. So be very careful if you do interact with the Telegram group. So now what we're going to do is we, let's assume we just downloaded it. We're going to install and open Sparrow, however you do that on your computer. And then the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to open up Sparrow software in a second. Once I open it up, we're going to connect Sparrow to a Bitcoin node. And again, you can use someone else's node. This is less private. That node is obviously seeing your transactions, whether the person, the node operator is actually watching them is another matter. But using someone else's node is less private. And you're also trusting them not to feed you fake block chain data or also not to do the verification of the consensus rules etc correctly so those that's the downside with using someone else's node for the purposes of this video we're actually going to use someone else's node but if you can connect this to your own bitcoin node this is definitely much more private and you interact with a bitcoin blockchain directly and that's something as well that i cover in the paid course side of things so let's open up sparrow and the first thing we're going to do is make sure we're connected to a node. We can see down here that this little blue color that shows that I'm connected to my own node at the moment. We're just going to go up to preferences here and then you can under general you can use the source for your fee rates. You can decide what currency you want it in. Maybe you want this in euros or yen or Australian dollars exchange rate source uh, and you can basically leave all of this in a default manner. For the server you can see right here that I'm using Umbral. I've connected this to um, a, a node that's running through Umbral software. What I'm going to do now is show you how to use a public server which is uh, there's no real security problem with this there is you will be leaking privacy if you do this so I'm gonna go up to public server and then you have a choice of different trusted servers or different nodes that people are running Blockstream uh, Electrum on Blockstream and then a bunch of different ones uh, Seth for privacy is running one as well I'm gonna trust the Blockstream one here so I just select that I click test connection and then we can see that I am, am connected uh, to the Blockstream node so then I can just close that and once I close that we'll see the, the color down here turn to yellow to show that I'm using someone else's node now the next step is we're gonna set up a new wallet so we go here we click on new wallet and I'm just gonna call this YouTube Sparrow demo do not reuse because I'm actually going to be showing my recovery seed here so I want to make sure that I don't um, reuse this again and leak even more privacy so then you just click create wallet and this will take you to another setup page what we're going to do here if you want to 
connect a hardware wallet, you could connect, uh, click right here for air gapped, uh, regular hardware wallet, which you connect through the USB uh, cord uh, this way. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new software wallet. You could also use this to import a software wallet as well. So we just click here. This one is going to be, I'm going to make it 12 words just to make it easy. And then I'm going to allow the wallet itself to generate the recovery seed. So I'm going to click generate new. And then what I'm going to need to do here is write down these uh, these 12 words. I'm going to take a shortcut, which you should never do. I'm going to actually take a picture of this on my phone. If you take a picture of your recovery seed on your phone, it ends up in Apple iCloud or wherever it ends up. And it can be easily, if anyone has these 12 words, they can move your Bitcoin. So this is definitely not recommended. I'm showing you these words here. The first person who sees these words, if you know how to do it, is going to be able to sweep all the money in the account. So that's sort of the Easter egg of this video. So I've generated the 12 words using uh, using Sparrow. Now I just need to confirm the backup. And so if I click here, it's going to make me re-enter my 12 words. So have these 12 words been written down in the next step, you will need to re-enter them. So I'm going to re-enter them right now. And I'm going to sort of speed up this process so you don't have to see it all, but I'll let you see the beginning of it. Now that I've finished entering, re-entering my 12 words, what I want to do is just click create key store and then import key store. You can leave the derivation path here uh, the same it is. So I click imp import and then all I need to do is click apply here and the wallet is ready to use. I have the option here of adding a password to the wallet. You don't need to do this. Uh, this will basically just encrypt the wallet on your computer. It has nothing to do with your recovery seed. For the purposes of this, I'm going to choose no password. So if I need to open it up again, I won't have to look up where I put the password, but you can add a complex password, a series of letters or numbers here if you want. Again, this is distinct from your 12 words, your 12 word recovery seed. This is just an encryption for your wallet sitting on your desktop or last laptop. So I'm going to click no password and we can see that it's uh, connecting to the uh, connecting to the blockchain through through Blockstream. And if we, if I ever forget my seed for this, I can just click right here. You can click view seed and it will show you uh, show you your seed. Again, this is a hot wallet, but it can be used for small amounts. I'm going to leave this right here at single sig. You could also use this to set up a multi sig wallet. I'm also going to leave it at native SegWit. They provide the derivation path here. You've got a master uh, fingerprint, etc. And then you can see your X pubs and your Z pubs down here as well. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to actually receive a transaction, a Bitcoin transaction. So I'm going to go right over here, click receive, and then it's going to generate a fresh address, a Bitcoin address. We can see that this is the one that begins with BC, BC1, and it says down here that it was never used before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scan this using my phone and I'm going to send over some Bitcoin so we can see this happen. I'm just going to scan the QR code using a mobile wallet on my phone. I'm going to send over 50,000 sats, which is approximately, I think it's about $22 at the moment. And so when you watch this video, what you could do if you wanted to uh, steal these sats is you could basically go uh, to this wallet, open up Sparrow, create a new software wallet using those 12 words and then send it to a Bitcoin address that you control. So now I've sent my Bitcoin transaction and we just need to wait for it to come across. And uh, that's what we're going to do right now. Up here, we can see where the transactions are. And it looks like it's actually already come across. So this is in the mempool. Uh, it hasn't been included in a block yet. Once it's included in a block, we'll begin to see this little circle get, uh, get covered, uh, begin to be colored colored in. So let's just wait now until this is confirmed. It looks like my transaction was just included in a block. If we mouse over here, we can see that it has received one confirmation. It's 50,000 sats. This is um, in the transactions tab here. If I wanted to send this, for example, I would just go to the send tab. I could put in a pay to address right here. I could adjust the fee amounts and I could send this 50,000 sats back out. Also another interesting tab, we'll be talking more about UTXOs later this week. If we click here, we can see that this is a 50,000 sat UTXO that went to this address currently valued at about $22 for 50,000 sats. So that's a brief introduction to Sparrow. Again, it's a very, very useful tool and we'll be examining it and using it more, I hope, in coming videos. If you want to keep up to date on Sparrow, you can follow Sparrow Wallet 
on Twitter at Sparrow Wallet. Make sure you're following the correct account. If you scroll down here, you'll see that there have been some scammer accounts. There's a Sparrow under slash uh, wallet, which is a scammer account. Sparrow Wallet is run, as far as I understand it, single-handedly. Uh, it's a one-man shop by Craig Raw, and it's really a fantastic product. So I wanted to let you know who's behind it, as well as give you a link to the donation page. If you begin to use Sparrow Wallet and you enjoy it, you can send some sats Craig's way because he works very hard on this project. And it really is, in my opinion, the best desktop software for Bitcoin. If you want to go a little bit more down the rabbit hole in terms of what we covered today, I'll also put a link in the description notes to my paid course where you can join Bitcoin University Premium. You can get access to the Ultimate Guide to Bitcoin course as well as the private Bitcoin forum. So I want to leave a link to that in the description notes below as well. If you enjoyed this type of video, let me know. I can do more tutorial videos like this. I definitely want to do a follow-up where I teach you how to connect your Blockstream Jade to the Sparrow Wallet. I already have a number of videos about how to set up your own node and connect your cold card wallet to the Sparrow Wallet in the paid course, but I hope to do some more free stuff here on YouTube as well. So if you enjoy these type of tutorial videos, do let me know or let me know if you prefer the more theoretical or philosophical videos. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.